I have a three prong answer to this, which mm -hmm. will save anyone having to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> the first is we could call bullshit on confidence and say, you either did the thing or you didn't. Mm. Now, if you go through life not doing the thing, mm. you need a narrative and a lie to tell yourself so you don't feel like shit. Mm. And a good narrative is I'm not a confident person. Yeah. The girl you saw on the train that you didn't talk to, the job interview that you never went to, the pay rise you never asked for, the, you know, fucking mistake they made at the restaurant that you were too much of a pussy to correct the waiter for. Mm. All of these things, if you suffocate underneath this life of constant inactions, you can paint a narrative you're not confident. Mm. And that excuses people from having to face uncomfortable situations. So I say to people, when the opportunity presents itself, you need to take action. So let's say that you are a single man, there's a woman on the train, Martin Place, and you think she's really hot and she hasn't got headphones in and you want the, the hey, never usually do this. I think you're beautiful. I would love the opportunity to take for a drink. Before you tell me you've got a boyfriend or not, feel free to lie to me. I won't yeah. take it personally, whatever. Now, if she goes, I'm really sorry, I'm married. You can have a giggle and you go, well, I hope you have a great day. And she's probably smiling, feeling good about it. You're probably smiling. You leave the train. And even though you got rejected, you feel amazing because you did it. Mm. Whereas if she gets off and you go, fuck, I never have the confidence to talk to someone. It's not about confidence. It's about you either did it or you didn't. And it really is taking action, isn't it? It is. It's, what, it's what separates people. It's and action. So, so then you have that. Mm. So then the second prong thing is there's a theory called the Zygarnik effect where uh, a Soviet psychiatrist, no, he would have been a psychologist. Uh, yeah, psychologist. He wasn't dishing out meds. Observed mm. that waiters and waitresses remember what people have ordered up until the point they paid the bill. So mm. if that's the case, it means that when they pay the bill, they no longer have to remember. So they forget. Open tasks keep up to cognition in our minds so that even when students are studying, they will stop halfway through study and go do something else and come back and help with their memory. TV shows will tell you what's coming next to open a loop so that you have to close it. Cliffhangers at the end of a series are opening a loop so you have to close it. When you leave a loop open, it creates mental cognition to close it. You know, mm. did I fucking lock the door? Yeah. There's a loop that you've created mm. in your mind, you need to close it. So now I say to people, the action in action thing, you now need to see everything you present yourself with as loops. You have the opportunity to close them, so close them. It might mm. end up with rejection. It might end up with things going wrong. It might end up with humiliation, but at least you've closed it. So next time you think you need to find confidence, you don't. You need to find the ability to close the loop. Mm. And if you can go through life closing loops, they only become easier to close. Yeah. Then the third thing, the third part of that, is about people that are confident are okay with failure. And yeah. failing is a really hard thing for people to have a relationship with. Hicks and Gracie, one of the most decorated martial artists of all time, I had him on a podcast and he goes, losing is not the same as being defeated. He goes, if you lose a fight, you've lost. But if you never fight again, you're defeated. 100%. And he goes, if you step on the mat, you can't be in control all the time if you win or not. But mm. if you never step on the mat again, you've been defeated. And there are so many coaches who tried an email marketing thing, tried putting out content, tried doing this. And they think that they, they had lost, but they're not, they're defeated. They completely stopped. Mm. Now, if someone's not afraid, you know, things might go wrong. Things might not work out. But if you can change your mindset to deal with losses as being fine, mm. you need to lose for a very long time before you win. Some of the, one of the best wrestlers ever in America, he's like, I'll shoot your sprawl, which is a defense. And he goes, mm. but at one point, you're not going to be able to sprawl anymore and I'm going to still be shooting. He goes, then I'll mm. take you down. And I was like, that should be everyone's fucking offense boxing. You just got to keep jabbing, keep jabbing, keep jabbing. No one can defend forever. And I'm not saying that you're attacking your climate, your, your prospects or your clients, yeah, but yeah. you need to be tenacious. You need to be wholly. Have you always had that mindset? No, it takes, it takes training, mm. but you know, you, you build up, you build up some tolerance there. And also then the more successful you are, the more hate you get, the more criticism you get, you know. You that's, I think that's a big one that, that stops a lot of people. That's the, the tall poppy. So it's like mm. the more speed you generate, the more dangerous it is mm. as well. So you, there are so many like caveats to this and so many different ways you're going to get hit from different angles, but you need to kind of like, you need to stay on course and you need to keep being tenacious with it, which is why like, um, another reason why I love training jujitsu, which I mm. speak about a lot, but like, it's the same in that realm where if you don't keep getting better, someone else will. Yep. And they'll progress and you'll watch them overtake you and you won't be able to beat them. You need to stay in your own lane. You need to keep developing your own things. And you need to have this 
kind of mentality. And like, you'll, you'll be aware of this more than me, but a lot of business owners, solopreneurs or whatever, so many of them have an opportunity, not just for themselves, but for their families, yeah. for their partners, for their kids. And like, if you look at the world now, this is a really savage thing to say. The separation of wealth is only becoming bigger. You need to pick right. which side you want to be on. 